Hi there, Ophindic3363, and all the rest of you good people out there, of course. Uh, regarding your question on the Annex Forum on uh, converting STL data uh, to sheet body. Uh, now, uh, as uh, previous uh, people who have replied to the post have pointed out, uh, you do not really need to... Uh, create a sheet uh, body uh, with BREP surfaces on top of uh, the geometry that you already have in the form of convergent body here in NX. Uh, since NX is a um, uh, uh, really uh, hybrid modeler uh, where you can mix and match convergent uh, modeling with uh, traditional uh, solid and surface modeling, um, there is no real need and uh, you really have the tools at hand as well in the polygon modeling suite. And now since uh, you still seem to want to have this as a surface model and I'm thinking, looking at the geometry here, that it is the regular top shape here that is the surface that you want out of this. Uh, so, in other words, I will do this in, in uh, two steps, kind of. I will start by uh, kind of showing that polygon modeling will probably do what you want. Uh, and in, in addition, uh, polygon modeling, uh, that means convergent modeling, means uh, dealing with the facet uh, geometry directly. Uh, and in addition, we will create a, a set of or a BREP surface uh, describing the irregular shape on top here. Now I have uh, re kind of I have done the whole thing here, but since you asked for the uh, surface only, uh, that is what we will focus on. So assessing this model, we know that uh, this is a convergent model uh, or convergent body. I mean. Uh, uh, a setted body that is probably a scan that uh, if we look at the uh, facets and the orientation we can see that it seems layered so it might be that it is an FDM uh, model that has been uh, scanned uh, three printed model uh, now uh, this is really a dense definition for my system uh, meaning I will uh, kind of try to optimize this uh, the best I can. Under the reverse engineering tools we have the fit surface and that is going to give me the first one because if I take a side view here we can see that the thing or the uh, geometry that it seems to be based on is kind of a cylindrical shape or, or an arc shape there. Uh, I will do a fit cylinder. I will do it on single facets. I will do a uh, force direction of the axis of that, uh, and I will do have it uh, resulting in a single surface and a sheet. So, uh, doing this, we will use the bottom rim here if you like. You can see that those facets are really, really small. Uh, we will uh, select uh, uh, kind of a bunch of facets around the uh, rim here, if you like. And uh, maybe I don't have to be that accurate. It's just an example in this case. Uh, I think this is probably accurate enough. Let's pick one more there. Okay. Uh, we're going to do the force direction, which would be in the profile direction there, if you like. And uh, we're going to say OK to that. Looks like it's close enough. Uh, that surface, we're going to extend that in all directions uh, in order to get it big enough. Uh, if we take a side view, let's take this one. Uh, we can see that we have a transitional uh, surface original there. We don't want that to be part of this definite. We only need the top. So the transitional area here, uh, we do not need. That means I will offset that surface uh, by a certain uh, uh, amount. And 0.8 seems to be... Yeah, then I get rid of the transitional area, so that should be fine. So we say OK to that. 
Uh, we can blank uh, the first one there or hide it. Uh, I only need to focus on the upper area here, so I'm going to actually trim uh, kind of the other bits off uh, just to simplify things. Uh, now this is a convergent body uh, with heaps of facets as you saw in the dense definition of, of the convergent body. Hence uh, the trimming operation here uh, takes a little bit of time on my system uh, and that is just simply because of the uh, really dense definition there. Uh, when it's done, you can see that uh, we got black highlighting edges, meaning I got actually a face there, which is great. Uh, because that means I can delete the inner uh, faces there, as I really don't need them anymore. And I'm going to kind of focus on the exterior here, uh, which is good. And uh, we move on to polygon modeling. I'm going to remesh this thing here. And I'm going to remesh it to 0.5. I start by selecting the actual convergent body here and ensure that I got my 0.5 there. I'm going to edit the copy. I might have to reset that to 0.5. There we go. And we're going to move from uh, 30 sorry, 435 ish thousand. Uh, facets to something way less. Let's do a show result and see how much we can reduce by uh, remeshing uh, this. Now, remeshing is a great way of optimizing your convergent body uh, and, and uh, having the uh, orientation of those facets in an optimal, uh, optimal way. Um, uh, for all downstream purpose, uh, basically. So we're going from 435-ish four, to 21,000 uh, facets, 22,000 facets. Now, that's quite a reduction, but we're still maintaining the shape. All fair, all good to me. So I'm actually going to keep that. Perfect. And once that has been created, uh, we can see we kind of have a little bit of orange peel thing going on here. Uh, we can do the uh, uh, smooth operation on this. Uh, smoothing operation means that uh, we have a smoothing factor. The higher I set uh, this smoothing factor, the more it's going to affect the actual shape. It's going to kind of flatten it if you want. Uh, so I don't want to have too much smoothing factor on the, in this specific example. Uh, I'd rather crank up the iterations here uh, because that will keep keep it closer to, to kind of the original. Uh, and we select the body that we want to smooth and we say um, we say okay to that. And uh, remember now it's 21, 22,000 facets that needs to be smoothened uh, in between or, or uh, to each other, if you like. Uh, uh, so it's going to run off that. It's going to smooth by 10% and it's going to do that five times. Uh, so uh, already we look a lot better. Uh, now this could be used for thicken. Uh, it should be working two ways. Uh, so, uh, well, I think this is uh, good enough and this is where you should go. Now, you say that you wanted a face uh, surface still. Uh, so let's see if we go to the delete uh, face here. Uh, we got the orange peel going on there. Uh, we did a smooth to that. And uh, let's see, you know, we are there. Okay. We, we can we can use this as an example still. Uh, let's do a... Uh, we can see that we have all the facets there. Great. Uh, but that means if you're going to section this thing, uh, every facet that I, I section is really a curve, a, a linear uh, element, if you like. And we want a smooth shape to this, so we actually want some compound curvature to that. Um, let's see what we can do about that then. 
So let's see if we can make that convergent body into a surface. We start doing that by using composite curves. Uh, so I'm going to extract an inner curve there, composite. Uh, I'm going to do it at degree 5 and I'm going to add a little bit of wiggle room in there if you like, uh, just to smoothen that curve out. And I'm going to do that on the exterior curve there as well. And we say OK. Uh, I have the same um, same tolerance value to those, if you like. Uh, now I'm going to I'm going to use the inner curve as as a spine in order to cut this uh, create intersection curves with this uh, uh, surface or, or uh, uh, convergent body here. Uh, I could do that with uh, planes, but that means I would get a section on both sides, and I only want one side. So I'm going to create myself a little section uh, based on. Uh, on the inner one here. I'm gonna have the starting point, let's say down there, uh, where not so much happens to the shape. And we're gonna say, uh, okay to that. We're gonna create a circle there, which is gonna uh, enclose a planar face. Uh, and, and hence uh, we create ourselves a bounded plane there. So that's a planar surface. That means if I uh, intersect those two, uh, only one curve will be the result. Uh, we need a curve. We need an intersection curve. Sorry, we, we need a pattern here first. We need a pattern that around because uh, I'm, it's going to control my uh, uh, mesh surface here, if you like. Uh, we're going to do it along. I'm going to do it along here. Uh, let's rotate a bit. Yep, that looks good. Uh, 12 will be fine. Uh, so I'm actually, well, uh, let's see here now. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we're going to create ourselves a bunch of intersection curves between this guy and uh, all these bodies. And uh, here we can give ourselves a little bit of wiggle room as well. So we say, okay to that with a, a little bit uh, higher uh, tolerance there. And we hide all those. So now I have the prerequisites here to create that. And we hide that uh, convergent uh, face there as well. And we're gonna create ourselves a little studios. But before we do that, I'm actually gonna split that curve up a bit. And I'm going to split that curve. Uh, I'm going to use trim curve uh, because the starting point of these curves, uh, when you do a mesh uh, kind of face, uh, kind of have a, a meaning or, or is important. So, yep, uh, we divided those there. That means that if I now go back to surface and studio surface, create my primary curves using the input, we can see that the starting point is, is the same there. And then it's all about creating or selecting the uh, uh, cross curves here, if you like. And uh, we're going to continue. Uh, now I have a, a scroll wheel and my mouse is not really behaving, but let's see if the middle mouse button will take me through this. Uh, so I just select and OK with the middle mouse button and, and should be all right. Uh, I should probably survive this anyway. There we go. So there is our uh, surface. Uh, now, uh, depending on on uh, on the surface quality, you might want to touch the tolerance here, uh, depending on, on uh, how, uh, if we analyze the quality of this, let's say, show poles, we can see that we have a rather dense definition here. Uh, and, and that means we could have a little bit of wrinkles and ripples going on. Now it all depends on the input data, but let's let's reduce the position there as well. Uh, this is uh, kind of not like a Swiss watch anyway. So uh, now that looks a lot better. Uh, you could, of course, reduce that even more. You could also use the uh, X form to, to uh, improve the quality of that surface. Uh, but I'm going to be happy with that. And uh, we're going to remove the show poles. 
and the idea here was to create a thicken out of that and uh, we have one going inwards and of course we can have it going outwards as well so and and here we go uh, i think this is what you're after uh, i didn't uh, finalize the entire uh, design here uh, but that's just kind of simple modeling work so uh, uh, maybe I will revisit actually. There are some tips and tricks in that as well. Uh, never, nevertheless, uh, with that, I'm going to leave you for tonight and I hope that you got something out of this. So, um, to all you good people out there, uh, stay safe, stay sound, and above, stay healthy. Uh, over and out from Fred for now. Bye for now.